In the previous video, we added additional NICs to the existing vSwitch that we had. So we now have a virtual machine port group called VM Network, which has one virtual machine currently associated with it. We also have a VM kernel port, which is a system interface called Management Network, and we can see that it has an IPv4 address, 10.82.1.225 in my network environment, and an IPv6 address. Let's take out the two NICs that we added. Let's use those NICs for some other purpose maybe for a set of virtual machines that are going to be on a network that I consider to be somewhat hostile, not necessarily the internet, but maybe they're connected to my guest wireless network or something like that. I wouldn't want administrative connections coming in over that network. Let's go ahead and remove those two NICs. So I'm just going to go to the properties of vSwitch0. And in the network adapters tab, I'm just going to click on VM NIC2 and click remove. And do the same thing for VM NIC3 and then click close. And we can see that I've now got two NICs associated there again. So I'm gonna click add networking up in the right hand corner. And it asks me what type of connection I wanna create. So I'm either creating a virtual machine port group or a VM kernel. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, I wanna create a vSwitch first. Well, it's actually gonna ask you whether you wanna create a vSwitch or whether you want to use one of the existing ones and then just add it there. Now, of course, you could also go to the properties of the vSwitch and add these there as well. So I'm going to show you that in a second. We can bring up this interface here, and you can see either virtual machine or VM kernel. And as I was saying, it'll ask you whether you want to create a vSwitch or not, or use an existing one. I just wanted to add another virtual machine port group or something like that to an existing vSwitch. It may be better to do that from its properties, and then just click Add, and you can see that the interface is effectively the same. It just doesn't ask you for all those vSwitch details. Less risk of operator error, I guess. So I want to add a virtual machine port group that's going to be connected to a potentially hostile network. Only virtual machines that I want to be there are going to be there, and I don't want management to happen there. So I need to keep them physically separated. So I'm going to use different NICs for this. So I'm going to create a virtual machine port group. I want to create a new vSphere standard switch. You can see it's created a little diagram for me here. I'm going to create a virtual machine port group called VM Network 2, and I'm going to have these two NICs associated with it. I'm going to call this my corporate visitor center LAN or something like that. As I was saying, if you want to really get your consolidation rates up as much as possible and get as much traffic from as many different VLANs into one VMware environment, using trunking and VLANs and actually having VMware participate in the VLANs could be very useful. If we were doing that, I would just have to provide the number of the VLAN that I want it to be part of here. Now, of course, security issues and management issues aside, that could be a very easy way to handle a very complex network environment. So I'm just going to leave that blank. I'm going to click Next and Finish. And we can see down at the bottom now I've got a vSwitch 1, which has now a virtual machine port group called Corporate Visitor Center Network, and it has two NICs associated with it, VM NIC 2 and VM NIC 3. In this case, you'll notice there's no VM kernel port. There's no IP address for the system associated with those NICs. Whatever virtual machines that I have connected to that port group are going to be connected to those NICs, just like a physical server plugged into that network, and they're going to get bridged through the vSwitch, through those NICs onto the physical switch in the end. But at least on those network interfaces, they won't be able to connect to 10.82.1.225. Now, if they can access that IP address in some other manner, and they provide that IP address and it routes them to those other NICs, well, that's outside the control of VMware. But with proper traffic routing policies, with proper firewall policies, we can ensure that we separate the logical network, you know, 10.82, our private network, we can separate that and make sure no one from outside can hit that. And then I can have my external facing machines point out to those other networks, and I don't need VMware to actually have an IP address in that network at all in order to communicate, because it's all done through switching at layer two, rather than the higher level TCP IP protocol functions. I'm going to go ahead and remove it since I don't actually need it and take a look at something else we might want to do, which would be to have a dedicated network interface or a set of network interfaces that we might want to use for vMotion, where we're going to move a virtual machine from one host to another while it's running. There's a memory transfer that has to take place. So if that memory transfer is got anything sensitive in it, if it's a large amount of data that needs to be transferred, we want to separate it for performance, but particularly we want to separate it for security. In this case, instead of creating a virtual machine port group, I actually want to create a VM kernel port. So I'm going to go ahead and add networking here and just choose VM kernel. And once I do that, you'll see that things are going to be a little different. Yeah, I do want to create a vSphere standard switch. It already removed my vSwitch 1 from earlier. I do want to use NIC2 and NIC3, but now 
it asks me for some additional details that we didn't have before. The network label is effectively just the name, it calls VM kernel vMotion. If I was using VLAN tagging, I could specify the VLAN ID here. And you'll also have this option, use this port group for vMotion, which in this case is definitely what I want to do. I'm not actually going to connect to the interface or use the vSphere client to connect to this address. So I'm not going to say to use it for management traffic, and I'm not using fault tolerance yet, so I'll leave that off. I could associate it particularly with IPv6, but not really necessary. And now you see I have to actually provide an IP address. And we've now got uh, vSwitch1 again, so very similar to what we had before. The only difference is now instead of having a virtual machine port group, we have a VM kernel port. So that gives you a pretty good idea now of how to add a virtual machine port group and also how to add a VM kernel port and associate it with particular types of management traffic, in this case, vMotion.